Hello, my name is Eric Shabilsky, and I'm here to talk to you today about our ECMO simulator that our team designed in order to train physicians on emergency oxygenation. So what is ECMO or extracorporeal membrane oxygenation? This is a specialized procedure in which our team inserts two catheters into the patient's groin, one into the femoral artery and one into the femoral vein. These catheters are then connected to a circuit so we can drain the blood from the patient's body and run it through our membrane that removes carbon dioxide and inserts oxygen, and the blood is then reperfused back into the patient. This is very important in time-sensitive conditions such as cardiac arrest. Even the highest quality CPR provides about 33% of our body's normal perfusion. With ECMO, we can actually meet or exceed 100%. So why is ECMO training important? These are the most critically ill and injured patients that we can see, either suffering from cardiac arrest, drowning, or a COVID-19 related pneumonia. It's a very complicated procedure in which we have to insert needles and devices into the largest blood vessels in the patient's body. And then there's currently no way to actually train these providers on this procedure at the moment. That could be leading to significant complications such as bleeding or infection. Our team designed an ECMO simulator that has a couple important features. It is a rigid tank that allows us to remove fluid from the simulator and actually put the fluid back in. And it's able to handle that pressure due to the rigid tank. We have replaceable skin pads with blood vessels inside. So we can actually identify the blood vessels on ultrasound. It's a very low profile simulator and has an anatomical contour, allowing this to be used as a standalone task trainer or in concert with one of our high technology simulators. So how this works is we secure the simulator onto a mannequin or an actor. The ECMO team will utilize ultrasound technology to identify the vessels and insert the catheters. The circuit is then connected and turned on and we're able to achieve flows of greater than five liters per minute, which is the standard for a common adult patient. The patient can then be transported on flow to radiology or even the intensive care unit. Some competitive advantages of this device are its mobility, the simplicity, and the adaptability. Within days of providing our first training to our emergency department staff, we were activated for a young male in the area who had suffered a drowning. Paramedics on scene provided life-saving procedures, but they were not able to get the patient's heart started again. Once a patient arrived to UW's emergency department, we placed him on ECMO, and within two weeks, he went home with no neurological deficits. So what does this mean for UW Health? We've actually doubled the number of ECMO pumps that we have throughout our system from four to eight in the past two years. We currently have 12 credentialed providers who are allowed to do this procedure. With this simulator and our standardized curriculum, we are hoping to get that number up to 27 credentialed providers by the end of the academic year. In the calendar year of 2019, we cannulated 58 patients at UW Health. Based on where we're at at this year and extrapolating those numbers, we're aiming for 72 patient cannulations this year. ECMO was billed at approximately $117,000 per procedure. Therefore, that increase of 14 patients in this calendar year would lead to approximately $1.8 million in increased revenue. We also performed education for our med flight crews on how to initiate or transport patients on ECMO throughout the region. And we are now one of only a handful of air medical companies in the world that will actually fly out with physicians, perform the cannulation, and then bring those providers back to our institution. Due to this increased capacity throughout UW Health, there's actually talk right now of creating an ECMO ICU just to house all these critically ill patients. The Extracorporeal Life Support Organization, or ELSO, is responsible for accrediting all ECMO centers throughout the world, and there are currently over 930. We're in conversations with them right now and they're evaluating our simulator to potentially be the required uh, trainer for all ECMO centers in the world. There's a patent pending and we've just begun joint education with the University of Iowa Healthcare in order to gain data to evaluate the efficiency of our simulator. Our team consists of myself, I've got my master's of simulation along with certified healthcare simulation educator certification. Dr. Josh Hermson is a pediatric cardiothoracic surgeon at UW Health and Mengiz M. Tazal is an undergrad biomedical engineering student here at the university. The next steps are to take this technology and move this over to the Vino Venus or VV ECMO simulation trainer, and then also a pediatric ECMO simulator. I wanna thank you for your time.